In this video, I'm gonna focus in on two code subsections, 240.4F and 240.21C1. They pretty much say the same thing. 240.4 is about conductors, 240.21C is about transformer secondary conductors. So in F and C1, they do the same thing pretty much, the wording. What it really tells me is that the only time I can protect a secondary conductor of a transformer with the primary overcurrent device, that means using primary only protection, is when I have a single phase transformer, that's what this is, but it's gotta be limited to two wires in and two wires out. No neutral, no third wire, just two in, two out. Or a three phase delta delta with three wires coming in on the primary and three wires going out. Three phase delta primary, delta secondary, three wires, three wires. That's the only two times I can use a primary overcurrent device to protect a secondary conductor. Well, let's see how it calculates out here. And this is where we're gonna start. We're gonna start looking at my secondary full load amps and say, what size conductor do I need minimum to carry 100 amps? Sure. I look at my ampacity table, table 310.16, and I'm looking at 75 degree wire. We'll just keep it simple, 75 degree Celsius column copper. I come up with a number three can carry 100 amps. Seems good, but I put a question mark. Because those two code sections, they have this language. The overcurrent protective device cannot exceed the value that is determined by multiplying the secondary conductor ampacity by the secondary to primary voltage ratio. Well, that's a mouthful. Let me write it out and we'll see what it says. This is basically what it says. This overcurrent protective device has to be less than or equal to the secondary co conductor ampacity times the ratio of, in this case, 120 volts to 480 volts. What is that ratio? 120 over 480 is about a quarter. So let's write some numbers here. My secondary conductor ampacity is 100 amps. The ratio is 120 divided by 480 in this case. So that's a quarter. 100 amps times a quarter is 25 amps. It's saying that this primary overcurrent protective device has to be less than or equal to 25 amps. Now, 35 amps is more. That's if I wanna use a number three. So that's not gonna work. It's saying I need to use a bigger conductor or this is my maximum overcurrent device, 35. Could I lower this? If I went to a 25, yeah, I'd barely be able to carry the load here. It may or may not fully allow for the inrush current on a transformer. Depends on the characteristic of the breaker I'm using. But I also want to kind of sum it up because this is still a bit of a mouthful. But let's look at what it's really trying to do. My full load amps of 25, because my voltage went down by a factor of four, my amps went up to four times on the secondary, right? Volts go down, amps gotta go up. So a 35 amp overcurrent protective device isn't gonna trip until over 35 amps, simplistically speaking. So how many amps would it let run on the secondary before it tripped? Well, probably four times. Four times 35, that's 140 amps. This breaker would allow 140 amps to flow on the secondary. And when it got more than that, it would get into the tripping range for the breaker and the breaker would trip. So if I wanna maintain this breaker, I'd need a conductor that can handle 140 amps. 
Let's see if that would work in this equation. Well, magically, it comes out perfect. Well, yeah, because I thought, how many amps would this translate into on the secondary with this ratio going on? So if I put it in here, if I had a conductor that could handle 140 amps times that quarter, that would mean a minimum 35 amp breaker. That's what I have. So what conductor do I have that could meet 140 amps? Let's look at our, oh, I don't have it written this time. Let's look at our ampacity table, table 310.16. Now I don't have a conductor that hits 140 amps. A number one would be 130 amps, or a one aught would be 150 amps. So in this case, I'd have to go with a one aught for 150 amps. And if I plug it into the formula to make sure, 150 amps times a quarter, the ratio that we have in this transformer, would require no bigger than a 37 and a half amp circuit breaker. The breaker would need to be less than or equal to 37 and a half amps. And a 35 would work. You know, there's also another option. I could kind of meet in the middle. That's a pretty big conductor for that load. So maybe I could meet in the middle. Let's think about this. If I went down to a 30 amp breaker, let's put this in another color, just hypothetically. If I went down to a 30 amp circuit breaker, 30 amps would result in four times as much current over there, which would be 120 amps. So I'd need a conductor that could carry 120 amps. Well, a number two is 115 amps. So I'd have to go with a number one, good to 130 amps. But you see how this goes back and forward? I could essentially use a 30 amp breaker. I'll draw it this way. If my overcurrent protective device were these various sizes, that would be how big the secondary conductor would need to be because 25 amps would result in 100 amps on the secondary. That wire would support it. 30 amps would require 120 amps, and that's the smallest wire that I have that would handle at least 120 amps. And a 35 amp would allow 140 amps, so I've got to use a one aught for 150 amps. So we can kind of play a negotiating game in this. And that sums up what those two sections both say about transformer secondary conductors. Only those two circumstances, a two wire single phase and a three wire three phase, delta delta, are when I can protect the secondary conductors with the primary overcurrent protective device. Now, if we have a secondary overcurrent protective device, there's other rules in 240.21 that apply, but that's for another day.